Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Sleepy Boring Objects. <gasps> yeah, or Monday Boring Objects, however you want to call it. But it's Sleepy Boring Objects. My name is Jason Newland. Ooh. Please don't listen when you can safely close your eyes. So, uh, oh, excuse me. I now have all my podcasts back again. <laughs> they were back, then they weren't. Now they are again. There was a little bit of um, a few issues. Some people. I had them back, but without music. Because Spreaker doesn't allow background music. And then people were mentioning there, there's sometimes adverts on them. There is sometimes adverts on the Spreaker ones. But only at the beginning. So you don't get interrupted during the actual recording. And then... I had some people say that they missed the music. So I got rid of the Spreaker podcasts, went back to SoundCloud. So instead of having 10, 12, 11, 13 podcasts, I just had two. Which for me makes it a bit harder for people to find what they want. So if you, if you just, if you want to listen to the sleepy, boring objects, I've got quite a few. But they're all on one podcast. They're just easier to find, if you know what I mean, if uh, individually. But of course, you know, if you go to the normal place you go to, uh, I'll post everything on there. Uh, sleep in hypnosis deeply, or whatever it's called. And but this will be the Let Me Boy to Sleep. I also post them on here as well because it's all part of the Let Me Boy to Sleep family. So Spreaker now offers an option of adding their own music into the background of a podcast episode. So I'll be playing around with that for a couple of days. I finally figured out how to use it. I struggled a bit, to be honest. And the only restriction is to be fair. I'm going to have to check if that is a restriction. Just thinking, because I wasn't doing it correctly before. But it wasn't allowing really long recordings to have background music. It was doing it for, if I tried to do it with a, like a 10 hour recording, it wasn't, it just wasn't doing it. But I'm going to just, I'm going to play around with that today for a little bit. Because I think... Oh, itchy beard. I think, maybe, yeah. Anyway, what I've done to combat that situation is... And I think this is something that maybe people would kind of quite want and would perhaps want to do anyway, is I've got it on repeat. So let's say the recording lasts for an hour. It'll repeat for 10 hours but gradually become quieter over that period. So yeah, that's I've done that for the last three or four recordings. I've kind of uploaded those. And going forward, 
each recording will be I'll have three recordings three versions one without music one with music which is the background music supplied by Spreaker then there'll be five and ten hours without music five and ten hours on repeat with music so I hope that's acceptable I've tried to find a way to accommodate everyone I know that it's impossible to please everyone it, but I'm giving it a go I know it's literally it's never going to happen but I'm only getting feedback from 197 people which is on my group and I'm figuring if I can at least keep 197 people happy then maybe that's a good start compared to all the thousands that listen <sighs> so that's the update on that and the other thing I do have my Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group if you'd like to join and I've got a YouTube channel at the moment I have been uploading or making creating and then I blow it up loading a 10 hour version of this recording and I'm going to look into that see what else I can do now that I think the options are open a bit and YouTube also allows background music but from their own catalogue of course as well so I'm going to look into that so I might do a couple of different versions of uh, YouTube videos. I might also look at doing some recordings where it's me on camera. Because for some reason they are more popular. I don't know why. I guess it's YouTube, it's video and people want to watch video. So. That is it. And that's all the updates. What am I going to talk about today? Well, let me tell you. I'm going to give you a hint. Girlfriend, gonna tell your boyfriend. Ooh, tell him. Ooh, ooh. If I was your girlfriend, would you let me dress you? Ooh. Yep. I'm going to talk about cutlery. So, I've had quite a few sets of cutlery over the years. Now I'm going to talk about girlfriends. Girlfriends. That's what I'm going to talk about. Not a subject that I have been involved in lightly. But in the past. So I'm going to talk about girlfriends. That's it. So I'm going to set my timer. It's not really a timer, it's just so I know how long I've been talking. Which I guess is a timer, isn't it? But it's not a timer as in... Uh, it's still a timer, blimey. Girlfriends. Girlfriends, girlfriends, girlfriends. Oh. My first girlfriend that I ever had was probably when I was in a children's home back uh, probably when I was six and a little black girl one of a few different black girls I've dated and I was fascinated with her hair. I was. I was fascinated with her hair. And so she lived in a kid's home. I think her both of her... It was an orphanage, basically. Uh, she had, I think, two sisters and I had two brothers. So it was kind of similarity between us in that sense. She was roughly the same age as me. She might have been a little bit older. She might have been a bit younger. I don't know. All I knew is I wanted to comb her hair. I just 
I don't know why. I just said, maybe there was a hairdresser in me. No, I don't mean literally, but I mean, maybe, maybe I had a flair for hair and I never, that's a bit of a rhyme, but I never kind of realised it. Perhaps that was my career that I never careered into. I, d I don't know. Oh, well. So her older sister had a go at me one day, calling me names and sort of saying I was... I didn't understand the, the term at the, t at the time. But... Uh, Basically, I was being prejudiced, which I wasn't because I didn't even know what that was. I didn't know how to be prejudiced. I knew how to be horrible, but I didn't know how to... The thing is, when you live in a children's home, the other kids are kind of your family. It's not like being at school because, you know, we were at school and living with each other going to church together every morning and separated but eating together probably at, yeah, at school and at home being separated at bedtime living in different dormitories for boys and girls and then we and things like bath time was separate but the rest of the time we were together together so she's basically my sister really in a sense and the and we'd walk to school together and you know you know the kids so it's it's a, it's a closer kind of relationship than just being friends I would say you know if you live with someone and you're with them kind of all the time But I think she was the only thing that I missed when I left there. Yeah, the only thing. Because she, I remember it was Christmas. So it was the Christmas. We went, I think, we might have gone back to my dad's at Christmas. We'd been seeing him for a little while and I think we spent Christmas with him that first year and then we went back to the kids' home and and then we were there for a little bit, sort of till the summer or something and then we then we left. But if my memory, it might not be correct. It's a long time ago. But I think she was who I missed. I don't remember her name. I don't remember many of the names to be honest. But she used to let me comb her hair before school. And she used to have a comb. I don't know if it was bone or wood. I can't remember. I think she might have had both. But she'd have it in her. And she'd put, like, put it in her hair when she went out. And I just, I don't know. I just liked, I liked combing her hair. I remember that. Uh, so she was, that was my... That was my first, first girlfriend, really, I think. And then... My second girlfriend... I was kind of in love with... I mean, I, unrequited love is a different subject. Honestly, it's a much bigger, much longer recording as well. Because I've fallen in love with women. Girls and women over my lifetime. And it's always been unrequited. It's never come to fruition. I'm not saying that I haven't loved the person I was with, but that all-consuming... Oh, I don't know. That feeling, I've not had it for a long time. But that all-consuming, absolute adoration, almost give them my kidney even if they don't want it you know kind of situation yeah never 
never had the response, but then quite often I'd never told the person either. So yeah, um, don't think I've ever had anyone be like that with me either. So I had a couple of yeah, a couple of uh, females that liked me. A few actually that I didn't really get with, but uh, and yes, I do regret it. <laughs> Blimey. So it was, this is one thing, and I don't know why I seem to have during my life, my adult life, not not my not my childhood life, but my adult life, I seem, or maybe when I was a kid, I didn't. I seem to be more attracted to people that weren't interested in me. Sometimes even attracted to girls or women that weren't even particularly nice or fr like not nice, friendly towards me. That's a better way to put it. They might be lovely people, but that they weren't friendly to me, almost didn't seem to like me. And for some reason, I seem to have been attracted to some of them women over the years. Some of them women. I'm going to use the word girl and women and girl and woman and whatever in connectedly because it's this whatever. This there's, there's times when I was young and I used to use the word girl. Sometimes do by mistake. Sorry, soz. But females. That's pretty much what I'm talking about. And I I was fascinated by girls. But I think it was because, probably because I was, first of all, I had two brothers to start with. I was born in, both my brothers were older than me when I was born. Both the old, they were older. Uh, and then the younger one came along when I was eight. And I was, I was older than him. So the... <laughs> the... Um, maybe I spent too much time around boys. And it was nice to be around girls. That might have been it. Girls were just nicer. Cleaner. Just nicer to be around and I've never been a macho person you know never been uh, really like aggressive and wanting to be like a show off kind of boy and I was around a few of those at school and it seemed that those there was those that were like that and those that followed those that were like that. And I was none of them. I had my individual friends who I got on with. And that was it. Some people didn't like me. Some people did. I can never really tell the difference between them. But, you know, I had my... Like my best friend, he was kind of like me really very laid back non-aggressive we were both quite small for our ages when we f when we first started at uh, high school and he he got bigger than me so he grew but he'd when I met him he was living in an orphanage as well so because we had something in common that is see he was living in Bernardo's home in the town that I was living in and because I'd used to when I met him it you know two years earlier I'd been living in one myself so there was that bond I think to know what it feels like to live in a place and also his his mum was still alive as mine was so it's not it was kind of uh, I don't know it's, it's hard to explain hard to explain 
what I'm trying to say. So the next girlfriend I had was when I talked about this the other day when I was in where was I yeah I only just moved to the little town with my with my dad and my new stepmom well my new dad really I'd never known him before before that uh, apart from getting to know him period so the weekend before we started school the new school I met this girl on the beach and we got really well we were playing and stuff and and that was it and I thought I'm never going to see her again and I turned up at school on my first day and she was there and you might say, well, it's a small town. But yeah, it was a small town. But there was one, two, three. I think there was at least four junior schools. And I went to three of them while I was there. So definitely it was big enough to contain quite a few kids. I don't know, probably 100,000 people, maybe less, I don't know, maybe more. So I, not kids, not the schools, there was 600 per class. No, there wasn't. Anyway, I remember her because I was so excited to see her and I was like, ooh, and bearing in mind a lot of this is probably going to be muddled up with the truth because our memories aren't you know I don't ha it, it, it might not be tr this, it might not be in the right order but I kind of these things did happen she came up to me so we were like friends and girlfriend and boyfriend but you know innocent and all that stuff and she I think she said, meet me after school. I said, okay. Uh, meet, uh, meet me in the, some part of the school, after school. I said, okay, so I did. And she led me the way to the tuck shop. And the tuck shop, she had a key to the tuck shop room. And got in there and we had a feast. Chocolate and sweets and crisps and stuff so the tuck, the tuck shop used to be open at break times and the kids could go and just buy stuff for a couple of pennies you know so basically we were stealing well it wasn't basically we were stealing and I didn't know it. I kind of I felt guilty but at the same time I felt strong and powerful. No, I felt, I don't know how I felt at the time. But we did it and then someone else got involved and we got caught by the janitor. I think it was. And then the next, I think the next day at school, a policeman turns up. And me and the other two people had to stand up. And the policeman basically humiliated us in front of everyone for stealing. And told us if we did it again, we'd be arrested and be put in prison and stuff. Now, I figured he would have told the parents... Maybe he did, and maybe my dad didn't do anything because we were so new, you know. Maybe let it go, but never heard a single thing about it at school, outside of school. Mind you, we were taken out of that school very quickly after that. Maybe I was expelled. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went moved to a different school. And... 
I had a girlfriend there as well. I used to run around and I used to give her my the chocolate. So I used to have a packed lunch and I used to give her the chocolate bar out of my packed lunch or some crisps. Um, the thing is, what she didn't realise is the chocolate bar, I only gave her a chocolate bar when I it was a penguin. I didn't like penguins. If it was a Kit Kat, she had no chance. I just hide those fingers were for me. Those fingers were going nowhere near her. They were for me. I loved the Kit Kat. Um, but with the, I don't know, with the penguin, it just seemed to melt too quickly, like especially in the summer. And, you know, I was a kid, so I'd probably have it in my pocket. Yeah, so she, I'm not sure if it's the same one, but I think it's her. That was my first ever date. So I was probably eight years old, roughly. And I remember the, the day, because my dad came in to wake me up. It's a Saturday morning. And I grabbed him really tightly and I was so excited I'm not sure if I've ever been that excited to wake up in the morning ever honestly I think that's the most excited I've ever been in my life and it's probably the most I ever loved him I absolutely adored him in that moment because I was so happy because I had a date so yeah, it's weird. That's when I was living in the little house that was, because we the house we was living in was condemned. It was a big white house. Moved out of there. My step grandmother moved to her flat. She got given a council flat. We moved into a council house, which was three bedrooms. Two big, big bedrooms, one small bedroom. I had the small bedroom, and my my two brothers shared. I think they had bunk beds in the other room, and uh, the parents had their bedroom, which is at the front of the house. I was just thinking about this the other day because the last time I slept in a house was two thousand and four, over Christmas. And I slept in that same room that I did when I was eight. Isn't that weird? So, eight to twenty-four. Eight to thirty-four. Blimey, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Wow, it's more than 12 years. So it's a, it's a long time since I'd... I had slept in that house before, but the last time I slept in there was when I was 34. Wow. I remember being in there... When I was at my living with my stepmom in my step grandmother's flat, and I was basically sleeping on the camp bed in her living room for about ten months. Near, I got nearly a year, really, about nearly a year, ish, maybe just just less than a year, and I went on holiday. I think they went on holiday twice. But the first holiday is they went away for a week. And I... I, I didn't... I don't think I was invited. I mean, I just, they just went. I don't know where they went. Abroad somewhere. And I stayed with my nanny granddad. So I slept in a spare room, which was where my two little, my two older brothers used to sleep 
And when we moved out, my nan and grandma moved in to that house. And they always kept that as a spare room. Uh, initially, initially, the my granddad's mother was going to be living with them because she was already living with them. But she didn't want to move and she got her wish. Before the we were pretty much all packed up and everything. I remember we got a phone call, or we, my dad got a phone call, to say that she'd passed away. I mean, she was in her late 90s. Nanny Waker, she was. And there was an Elvis movie on. It was a Saturday early evening. Late afternoon, early evening. And I don't know what the movie was. I got a memory that it was the one where it was a hawk, not a horse. Um, a cowboy. But it might have also been Blue Hawaii. I'm not sure. Because this is the period when the aftermath of Elvis leaving the planet. So his movies were being played quite a lot. And, you know, bearing in mind this was like 78. So yeah, it was only like a year after he'd gone. So yeah, he... It might have been 79, to be fair. So what happened is, I remember getting that... that the, um, the message. Because, you know, to put the phone down, he came in and told us all. I had to turn the TV off and I said, look, kids. So we used to go and see her in London very regularly. We'd be visiting my nan and granddad, you know, very often. Especially before we moved into the house. Uh, so we'd be up there, stay over. My granddad had a big, he had a long garden. And he was a keen gardener all the way up to the end. He loved his garden. And we used to play around and my granddad would keep telling us to be quiet. And I think we were a bit too noisy. Which makes me wonder, what was it like for my dad? Was he allowed to make noise? Because he had two brothers and two sisters. It would have been very noisy. I wonder if it was that strict for him. Where he wasn't allowed to actually express himself. Which may explain why he didn't want us expressing ourselves. Because that's what he learned. Maybe. There was a whole uh, thing of like children should be seen and not heard. And we grew up with that. Which is actually quite cruel. And I think according to the rules of the world it's not even legal anymore. There's actually, it's written in law that we, the children should be allowed to express themselves. And they should be heard. Not too loud, but you know. So anyway, I... I think basically with my granddad, he was a really good man. And the... The WW2 affected him in a way that was irreparable. It's as simple as that. So he wasn't... There's all these people that, you know, in like 1945, let's say, after that year, were raising kids and they did not have the capability, the mental capability or the emotional capability to do so because of what they'd been through. But they did it anyway. If they hadn't did it, I wouldn't be here. So it's it's a very, yeah, it's hard. You think about it, really, it's hard to judge when someone's been through something that I've never been through and hopefully won't ever go through. Anyway, keep it light, baby, keep it light. So, 
there was this, yeah, I had this date with this girl. It was the first ever date, date, proper date, date, like real date. We went to, I think we walked. I might, my, my dad might have given us a lift there. But we went to the cinema and it was a, I think it was like 10 o'clock or something cinema. And it was two movies. I think, I might be wrong, but I think it was Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger and Spider-Man, like the original Spider-Man movie that's what I think was on again um, I'm guessing uh, but I did watch them at the cinema at that kind of time and then we went back to her house which was not far from where I lived and I was invited to stay for dinner so I had some chips and fish fingers or beans or something like that. And then we we hid under the table and we had a kiss. <gasps> That's when I realised I'm gay. No, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was my first little kiss. And then I don't know if I was allowed back in the house again. I can't remember. Not really sure what happened to that relationship. I tell you, my when I was a kid, my one of my biggest, like, real um, upsets was I don't remember when this was. I wasn't old, but I wasn't young, young either. I might be in ten or eleven. Oh, just as I was talking, Vinny started barking out of nowhere. He was in the bedroom. He was asleep when I came out here, so I closed the door. He looked up when I closed the door, but he's been quiet. Now he started barking. Something outside. Hopefully you can't hear him too much. Basically, what happens is there's neighbours downstairs and they open all the windows and start shouting. And I think he hears that and he's like, oh. So he's just getting excited, that's all it is. Unless there's someone in the garden, there could be. But he might also just be shouting to me, Daddy, where are you? You annoying man, where are you? Why have you locked me in this big room with a comfortable bed and my water and food and... All the things I need. Why? This nice warm room. Why have you done this? A big double sized bed. All for myself. No. It's only for an hour. It's only for an hour. So. Um, I had this. He's still barking a little bit. But hopefully you can't hear it. If you can it should be very very quiet. He's just like, uh, 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 uh. he just can't stop himself. Now he's doing it again. I just had to shout it. Oh God, he's still going. I shouted it and then, and he's still going. There's a burst of energy of shut up. I just need him to be quiet. I really value quietness, peacefulness, more so if I'm trying to relax or I'm trying to make a recording. And unfortunately I've got the most yappiest dog in the world. I just need him to be quiet just for periods of time. Just. (sighs) 
<laughs> so, right, right. So I had to go and let him in, let him out of the bedroom, let him in here, and I realised he was actually just barking at me. All right, calm down. Good boy. Come on, give me cuddles. Give me cuddles. Good boy. Good boy, that's it. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yes, you are. Good boy. So, I don't know what age I was. I'm sure I was kind of maybe 11 10, maybe 12 even, but I met this girl, probably 11, 10, whatever, met this girl at a, oh, it was kind of like a social club we went to, and I was dancing, and I met her, and really liked her, we were dancing with each other, very innocent, but I liked her, and she seemed to like me, and she told me where she lived, I think I gave her my telephone number, and stuff like that. And we went out at a really good time. I think she met me at, I don't know, we might have gone to the cinema, we might have gone for a walk on the beach. But we had a really nice time. And this was at a point where I fancied her. So it wasn't um, like I really liked her kind of as a girl. Rather than as as a friend who was female, if that makes sense. And I was like, oh, really, really liked her a lot. I didn't write a poem about her, but I did really like her. Anyway, she... I'm not sure if we went out a couple of times, and then I walked her home. Like the good boy that I am. The good boyfriend. Walked her home, walked her up to her front door, and the front door opened, and this man, who turned out to be her dad, started shouting, Who are you? What are you doing with my daughter? What time do you call this? I mean, it wasn't late. Honestly, it was sort of Saturday afternoon, probably five o'clock or four o'clock or something. And she, he went, absolutely nutty at her and started shouting at me as well which she wouldn't have done if my dad had been there but my dad wasn't there and was like what are you doing we hadn't done anything wrong yeah you know, I checked my trousers were still on so it's fine there was no issues and I thought okay I thought nothing of it I Went round to see her, I think the next day, or and I think she was waiting outside for me. And she said, I can't see you anymore, my dad won't let me see you anymore. Now, when I got older, I started to think, which, well not older, like, I wasn't in my 30s when I was thinking this, but, you know, a while later I started to wonder, I wonder if it was just her. Making that isn't making her dad as the excuse because she didn't want to see me. But I still remember exactly where they lived, and that bugged me for a long time. As a kid, like why, why would, why would it be like that? I mean, it was very innocent, just really innocent stuff, and. Uh, uh, there was another girl called Mandy that I met in a holiday camp, and I wrote a song about her. Now, those that haven't, <laughs> those that haven't been uh, lucky enough to hear the song, I won't. I won't. Shall I sing it? I've still got the words in my in my brain. So basically, what it was is we met. I think it was the last day of her being on the caravan site, and it was our first day first whole day and we really got on well but she was leaving and I remember watching her leave 
waving to me as she left. So I wrote a song called um, Mandy. And that was it. That was I don't know where she lived or where she was from, but she wasn't from here. She wasn't like from where I lived. So I, this song was, uh, was it? Mandy baby, listen to me. Mandy baby, I want you to see. Mandy dear, I want you to hear. I don't want a single tear. I love you baby, Mandy I do. I just want to know if you love me too. Just say something like, just say something I want to know. Just say something like hello. Oh Mandy, I love you. Or rather, I love you. So that was my my song I wrote for her. Never saw her again. So I don't know. I remember her name. I don't know why. Why do I remember her name? It was Mandy. Yeah, it was Mandy. Yeah, I do, yeah. I don't know why I remember her name. So, trying to think who else there was. I had a girlfriend kind of on off at school, but it was, never really saw each other outside of school, just messed around at school. It was, yeah, so. But then who else, as far as girlfriends go? I was very unsuccessful when I got to high school. When I was in junior school, I used to spend a long, t- a lot of time with girls, because that was fun being around the girls. I mean, there's there's one I really liked, um, but she was way quite a bit old, younger than me. So, I think I was in the third year when she became in the first year. Or maybe even in the fourth year when she was in the first year. Probably the third year. I don't know. I lose track. But she was... She was just nice. I remember... I didn't see her that often. No, probably in the third year. Didn't see her that often. But I did fall in love with a friend. Who was best friends with my neighbour opposite her name was Sarah my friend asked her out and she said yes and then she changed her mind uh, two hours later so it wasn't a long relationship and I fell in love with her and I think there's a couple of reasons I know it sounds she was an adult if you know what I mean she was she basically she she looked 20, you know, physically. She was just much more mature than all the other girls. And I just really liked her. I think I was... I had a crush, basically. And it felt like love. So I started writing her love songs. But I used to give them to her. One was called Sarah. Sarah. Uh, uh, the song I did I did write poems and stuff I used to give her chocolates and balloons because I was like 14 at the time and she was (laughs) I don't know what she was blimey too young but I was too young as well too young to fall in love Maybe I was 15 and she was 13. Something like that. Anyway, I gave her... I kept giving her gifts. And in the end, she told me to go away. Which I did. And then... Oh, yeah. So I wrote her a song. The poems. It didn't seem to do the trick for some reason. And she... She called, what did she do? Oh yeah, the song was called Sarah. So it's, Dear Sarah, how do you do? Hope you're missing me the way I'm missing you. 
do you think about me in your dreams? If you do think about what it means. Feelings are not always shown during the day. But when you go to sleep, all your worries drift away. And then your feelings start to arise. Showing something that you didn't realize. I love you, you know it's true, there's nothing that I can do, 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 do. These, feelings are, these feelings are uncontrollable, I'm going out of my mind, there's nothing that I can do about it, Sarah I love you, something like that. It's, I missed, there's a few bits I've forgotten, but most of the words I remember still. And yeah, that didn't work either. I mean, it's, you know, I don't know why. I think I must have grown up with this fantasy that writing a love song to a woman would be something that would work in somehow reaching her heart and I've tried it on four different occasions writing songs and it didn't work on any of those occasions in fact we could argue it went the opposite way which was a shame so I was she I think she was my f no she wasn't I would say she was my first obsession but she wasn't there was this girl at school in drama and she I mean, these weren't my girlfriends so I don't know why I'm mentioning them really but she I asked her out we got on really well we started getting on really well and it was at a period when I didn't get on well with women girls right generally when I was a teenager girls didn't like me really it was weird I went from being really gone really well with girls when I was a kid and then in junior school there's a couple of girls I got on with but it was yeah it's mainly just they sort of kept away from me so or just weren't weren't interested but then trying to think where was I going with that yeah there was there was going drama and I asked her out she said I'll tell you after the half term which was hard so I spent the whole of the half term waiting to see what she had to say and the answer was no and if I remember rightly I think I got that answer when I saw her with her boyfriend and, and I think how this happened is she was, she was still nice to me though, because she was a bit of a bully girl. She used to like to pick on boys and she like stand in front of them in town and not move, knowing that the boy couldn't do anything. And, and she, she wasn't, I didn't really like her. And then I one day she, I'm walking towards karate. So I'm what, 13, 14 at this point. I'm heading into the, towards the school, the, the school I went to for karate. And she followed me and she was trying to bully me. Like, what are you doing? And she'd do this kind of stuff at school, but I try to avoid her generally. And this isn't when I liked her. This is like previous to this. And she followed me and she she grabbed my bag and started kicking my pads around. Like, because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything to her. And then she stayed and watched the karate class. After then, she had respect for me. Once she saw what I could, not what I could do, but she saw that I was fairly okay at it. And she started being nice to me after that. She actually apologised. 
sorry for how she'd acted before. And we got on really well after that. And then I kind of, kind of fell for her a bit. But because we were in drama class together. So I asked her out. She, she, she said, I'll tell you what, after the half term, give you my answer. During the half term, what do I see? Uh, I see with a bloke or a boy. And she, she says hello to us because I'm with my friend as well. I said, you're right. And her boyfriend says, what are you looking at? What are you talking to her for? Right. I said, right. Okay. <laughs> and they walk off. He'd started, after half term, he'd been expelled from his previous school and he started coming to this school that I was at and he was in my class. And he came up to me, right, and he apologised. He said, sorry about how I was with you when I'm with, because he was still dating her, but he, he apologised to me or how that he treated me, or how he'd like spoken to me. So that was quite nice. So she still liked me as a friend, I guess. Just, she must have told him off, I imagine. But I didn't have to wait to be told that she didn't want to go out on me anyway. <laughs> and I realised that. Blimey. But yeah, I didn't have a lot of success. <laughs> And trying to think of any other episodes when I was at school. Not much, really. When I left school, I was working in the chip shop. And there was a girl there that I asked. Actually, there, there was a girl that used to come in. And she was so bubbly. And she was still at school, but she was so cute. And I was like 15, uh, working in a chip shop. And I just like, every day, I, I don't know what year she was in. She's probably a couple of years younger than me, probably, I don't know. And so she, I was 15, she was probably 13 or 14. And I kept wanting to ask her out. And every time she'd come in at lunchtime and she'd be all, f well, not flirty, but just playing around, joking around and stuff. And I just really liked her energy. And I just wanted to ask her out, but I couldn't, just couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, so I didn't and then I met this other girl who was around about the same age as me she was friends with one lady the, the, the girls that worked there and she was around the same kind of age as me as well maybe slightly younger maybe even older I don't know but kind of the same age about 16 at this point. And I asked, she ended up marrying my one of my friends from school. One of my best men, my best friends. Funny enough. And they had lots of kids. But yeah. She had a twin sister that literally did look like her. And I'd never seen that before. I'd seen twin brothers and sisters that didn't really look like each other. But I did, uh, you know, I seen, yeah, but they, they were, that was the first time I'd seen two, two humans that looked like each other before in real life. I knew it was a thing, I just hadn't seen it with my own ears, you know. So, I thought about asking her out. I'm glad I didn't now, because, you know, she got she ended up marrying my one of my friends so that I'm glad I didn't sort of I mean she might not have said yes anyway because I don't know who knows but you know I wouldn't want to be with someone that my friend had, was going to be with because that's I don't know just don't seem right nearly happened but I'd have to skip forward blimey I can't speak to so many, so many women. Okay, this is going to be the longest recording I've ever made if I don't hurry up. So, <sighs> so I, I dated this girl when I was 16, 
15, 16, probably, I don't know, around that time. And the first date we had was, we went to an Indian restaurant. Never even been in an Indian restaurant in my life. Never mind, like, on my own. Well, with, with you know, without adults. A adult supervision. And it was quite cool. We went in there and the, the waiter showed us to the table. And I still remember where it was. Not the table, but the, the restaurant. And I had no idea what to eat. I think I might have had omelettes and omelette and chips. And so we went there and then I did bring her back to where I was living to meet my stepmom. And I liked her. She used to not my stepmom, the the girl, she used to wear a hat all the time. And I just quite liked that. I don't know why, I just liked it. Just there was something about hat wearing. It was it was just unusual. And I, she was the only female that I'd ever met that wore a hat, like day to day, just wearing a hat. Not like a hat as in to stop the rain or um, you know that kind. Of, but she just or bad hair day. Just she just wearing a hat all the time. I was going to say not in bed, but I wouldn't know because never got to that stage. But yeah, it was weird because that's because of her. I discovered Aha, the um, the second album. Oh, blimey, what's it? What's it called? The soft rains of April are over. Hurry across the water. Uh, whatever it's called. Um. And she was obsessed with Aha. And it turned out I was, I knew her, bro I knew her brother, I was friends with her brother. I had no idea she even existed. Well, I did at the time, because I was dating her, but I mean, like, previous to that. But I just asked her out and she said yes. So I got on quite well with her. She would come into the chip shop a couple of times to see her friend. And I said, oh, do you want to go out? you want to be my girlfriend? And she said, yeah. And I, I, I said, well, it's all right, don't worry about it, it's okay. Just thought I'd ask, there's no pressure. She said, no, I said, yes. I said, it's fine, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I'll spend my whole life on my own, it's okay. She said, I said, yes. I said, look, you're being too aggressive. You're too needy. I need to be, I need some space. No, but we went out and that didn't last very long. And I went round her house a couple of times and she locked her bedroom, wouldn't let me in. I think I said something, I probably said the wrong thing. I say probably because that was my thing, wasn't it? Still seems to be sometimes. Anyway. After her, and I remember, yeah, because I, I remember I got dressed up nicely because I was earning £60 a week at this point. So this is probably before I was 16, or, yeah, it was before I was 16, so I was 15, and I was I was buying nice clothes and all that kind of stuff, so, yeah, it was quite cool. I had these boots that used to click when I walked, and I had nice trousers and nice tops. Yeah, blimey. Um, so... After her, there was another girl that I started seeing. We had a little fling at school, like a a one-off little adventure. When it was it was a period when most of the school was on holiday, like on a holiday trip, a school trip, and those who were left that didn't go were just left at school to do what they wanted. And she was there, and another girl was there, and my friend was there. So basically, he he kind of paired off with her, and I paired off with the other one, um, or he paired off with the other one, and I paired off with her. 
and we had a little moment. But we're friends, we were friends for years before that. Always friends. And then we're friends afterwards as well. So kind of just didn't lead anything. And then one day we kind of met up. And I was, again, I was 15, I think. Yeah, 15. And she said, oh, go out if you want. Go out somewhere. Pick me up from work. She had a part-time job. Probably on a Saturday or Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon. So I picked her up, went for a walk, and we had a little thing going on. And started seeing each other, but that... I don't know, kind of... Oh, at this point... No, at this point I had my flat. Or I was just about to get my flat. And she did come into the flat and stuff. But... Yeah... It just didn't work out and... Yeah, well... Sort of fizzled to nothing. But she was nice, so I was always friends with her. For a long time, for years before that. Uh, after that, girlfriends, nothing, nothing, 16, nothing, when I was 17, I didn't have a girlfriend, but I did, there was someone walked into the, okay, I can't, there, there's this woman, this girl, walked into the co-op where I was working, it was a, that's like a little supermarket. I was behind the counter. She came up and just handed me a piece of paper and then ran off. And I'm thinking, what is it, a hostage note? I don't know, what, what is it? And it was just basically her declaring her love for me with her telephone number and her address on there, or maybe just her telephone number. So I thought, okay. I called her up the next day and I mean literally this is on a Friday called her up on a Saturday went round to her house in the morning to see her and she was getting ready to go to work she must have had a part time job somewhere and she didn't say a word to me she just did her hair and then she left and we never spoke to each other again But I don't know what the heck that was. It was very weird. Maybe it was a dare. Maybe she just like did it as a as a joke. But if that was the case, why did she have me go around her house? Very strange. And then I met someone at the. She was like um. We were short-staffed in the in the supermarket. So I was 17 at this point. This girl came over from a different store. And we got on so well. We were laughing all day long. Really, really good. And she came, I think she was there two days in a row. And I asked her out. And she said, yeah. So I went to, a, she lived in a different town. So she gave me her telephone number, gave me her address. And we arranged there and then for me to go and see her on Sunday. So this is, I think I saw her on the Friday and the Saturday. And then I was going to go and see her on the Sunday. We got on so well. I mean, honestly, probably better than any other relationship I've had before the relationship started, that is. And then I went round her house. I went to the town, got a taxi to her house, went round there, and a friend, she had a friend there, who basically did everything to sabotage the date. Why she was there, I don't know. All I wanted to do was just spend some time with this lovely person that I'd met, and we didn't get a chance to do it because her friend was jumping, crawling all over me. Like flirting with me, trying to kiss, like all kinds of stuff. And in the end, the girl I'd gone to see got the ump with me. And, and so I just, I left. 
all of the taxi, came home, and that's the last time I saw her. So that was a weird, weird date. And then there was this woman, because she was 25 at this point, this woman. She was having a fist fight outside the supermarket with another woman. Like, never seen this, well, not for quite a while, hadn't seen this. And the next time I saw her, I started um, singing the Rocky tune. And she she found it funny. So I'm 17, she's 25, and I really like her. Really like her. And she likes me, but it's more probably, I don't know. I I fell for I really fell for her. But she took advantage, well, I don't know if she took advantage, but I, I wanted to be around her, so I started being around her. She was... She was best friends with my landlady who lived upstairs. So that kind of came together quite nicely. So I did. I got to see her quite a bit because she was always round. And then they'd ask me to babysit for her kids so them two could go out. And I'd do that. And then one night we had a little thing. And I was 18 at this point. Yeah, so I was, because I'd already started my job. I couldn't work there till I was 18. So I was 18, working in the factory. And I'd been, I think I'd been babysitting for her kids. She came home, probably drunk, I don't know. And, you know, we had a little bit of fun. And I was grinning for the whole day. Got no sleep. But I was at work all day, and it's probably the best day of work I've ever done. I didn't do any work, but it was probably the what, most happiest. And I was proper in, in love with her, I think. But she wasn't in love with me, and she, yeah, nothing else, nothing ever happened again. Until this is to be continued. Oh, yes. 1993, Christmas that started again so I was quite a bit older by then so um, after uh, 1987 88 nothing 88 there was no I did I did I met a girl I was just basically hanging around with my friends we went to this social club and I met a girl danced with her but she didn't live anywhere near me. I think she lived in Stevenage or maybe, I don't know why I've got that place in my head. I don't know if we had a kiss, but we definitely had a dance. And we swapped details and I was writing to her. I was talking to her on the phone regularly for a whole year. A whole year. And it petered, petered out a little bit nearer the end to be honest but I still I was in regular contact with her and she came back the following year exactly the same time and I was going to meet up with her and I went to surprise her and it turned out that she had a boyfriend who she met that same night who was also from that town and she'd been dating him for a year. He'd been going up there and... I actually went round to see her... In about 1991. So this was 89. I went round to see her just to, to see how she was. And she had a kid and the bloke had left her and... Yeah. It wasn't a terrible journey. It wasn't a terrible visit. Just went and had a like chat, had an ice cream or something, and really liked her. To start, you know, when I first met her, really liked her. So that didn't work very well. Uh, What's the other one? But she wasn't my girlfriend, so I guess it, it's not really girlfriends. These are people that I nearly dated. That's why it's going on for so long. If it was. If it was actual girlfriends, this recording would have been over about an hour ago. 
So, oh, I, I did have a girlfriend, ginger hair. That's not really relevant, but she had ginger hair. And this is 89. So we dated for a while. And... I think really 1990 was the first time as the first proper girlfriend I ever had. She called Michelle and she had three kids, but she they weren't with her. They were in America, apparently. But um, she, I remember we was on a bus and she showed me a picture of them, but I couldn't tell you what they looked like because I only pretended to look. So, um, we dated for about a few months and I was in contact with her for, yeah, probably about eight, eight or nine months. And at one point, even though we weren't really dating anymore, she did ask if I wanted to move in with her, like get a place together. And... I said no, because I'm going to move to London to be a stand-up comedian. And she said, oh, okay. And I I'm sure she said, oh, that, is that more important than me? I said, yeah. But the thing is, I knew she was kind of playing me. You know, I saw what she was doing, and she was she, she'd be in relationships and stay friends with them and just hop between them and use them for whatever she needed you know she needed somewhere to stay or needed someone's company and it's, that was kind of what she was doing so she was keeping on good terms with everyone and I didn't really want that because I saw that I remember I went round I was with her we went round this person's house and it was her ex-boyfriend but I'm pretty sure he didn't know that he was her ex I think he actually thought that they were still together and I was just a friend. So th that that confused me a bit and I thought, no, I didn't want to be in that situation. But she was lovely. I liked her a lot. But yeah, that was that was weird. She um, was kind of my first, if you know what I mean. And yeah. That was good. Well, it wasn't, but... Yeah. So, the second... After that, 1990... 91... My first... I'd say my... F she was kind of like my first proper girlfriend, but not really. Because... Well... I think I would class, like, my first real proper girlfriend is someone that you go out on dates with someone you spend time with someone you go and do things with and that was the girl that I met in London in 91 she was just a temper a temp in the bakery and I was working in a canteen she was just temping because I was short of staff so she was there for a couple of days. I got to know her. I really felt relaxed around her. I asked her out and she said yes. And we arranged to meet at Liverpool Street Station at, on the steps at a certain time on Saturday night or whatever. So I went there, waited for her. She didn't turn up. And that was it. I didn't have a number, I didn't have anything. So I thought, okay, well, fair enough. And I just went to the comedy club because it was not, not far away, so it wasn't really a huge deal. Didn't expect to see her again, but we were short-staffed again on the following Wednesday, and she turns up, and she's embarrassed. She probably didn't expect to see me again. So she did, she stood me up. I mean, you know, she she admitted to it. And 
she apologised and she said, oh, I'll make it up to you, we'll, we'll go out. She made an excuse like she couldn't get out of her house or whatever. Anyway, we, we ended up in a relationship, like in a, lo a loving relationship that lasted for, till the summer, till the end of the summer, September probably, yeah, September. Um, and then I had a very, yeah, so I didn't have any girlfriends. That, that, that ended. She moved away to become a nurse, to train as a nurse. The weird thing is, I remember once uh, we was in Hackney Wick, because that's where she lived in London. I think she was just staying with relatives. Because she didn't have her own room, I couldn't go back to hers or anything like that. I must have done. I must have done. Where else would she? she didn't come back to mine, so it must have gone somewhere. Yeah, but I think she was staying with relatives, so it was limited to when she when I could go around. So I. We used to spend a lot of time, like, in the West End, going to the cinema, you know, the weekends and stuff. So we'd be going sometime, I think we'd gone to South End, and, yeah, we'd, we'd be with each other most weekends for this period of time. And then she started college. She moved late summer to start probably in September her course so she she was already settled in to the student accommodation probably in August time so I went and visited her there and she yeah there was some stuff going on and yeah we, we just basically I didn't see her again until two years later where we met up and rekindled for a short time so that was 91 end of 91 I dated someone briefly but I was working at the Elephant and Castle and there was all these girls that were hanging around all friends and the, it's just like it was like a group and I it was quite nice. I used to sort of spend time with them. And they'd just spend time with me. Because I was outside selling tapes. And there was one particular one I really liked. Because she had a boyfriend. But she was constantly hugging me. And she was pregnant as well. She got pregnant, not by me. And she was just really... Really nice. I really liked her. Like everything about her. She was just so personality just everything she was just someone that I would want to be with just that I don't know what it's hard to explain anyway but she had a boyfriend so that wasn't really an issue although so I dated this this girl and then that kind of went nowhere and then I met a sister I was like wow I asked her out she said yes we went for a date in the local pub Charlie Chaplin which was just next to the shopping centre and we're sitting in there and I'm, my friend who I was working with came over he sat with us as well it wasn't like a romantic date it was the plan was we were going to have a drink and then go to the cinema that was the, the plan and then blokes kept coming up they started coming up to me as saying she's got a boyfriend you know you know it's like really and it was getting a little bit tense to be fair and the bloke I was the, my friend was there he, he was all rare he wanted to have a <laughs> he wanted to have a punch up and I feel like it's not worth it I said you got a boyfriend she said yeah I said, well, why are you coming out with me then if you've got a boyfriend? And, you know, you can't go to a cinema with someone 
if you've got a boyfriend. And she, they knew about the cinema, so I don't know. She must have told them. Or maybe she told her sister, and her sister didn't like me because I was not with her, and now I was potentially going to be with her sister. But nothing happened there at all. I just said, this, this isn't worth it. I've got to come back here tomorrow, or not tomorrow, maybe Monday, because I was working there. So, this, let's just leave it. So, we finished our drinks and just let her get on with what she was doing. That's the last I heard of her. I might have seen her a couple of times, like around, but that was it. However, there was a ginger girl. I've dated a few gingers, ginger girls over the years. I liked her as well, but she had a boyfriend. But So we were just friends. But we, we kind of hooked up the next year. So I just turned up just to see my friend who had the record shop. And we ended up spending the entire day and evening together. It was, yeah, it was like we were magnets, just like connected together. So, yeah. So, um, to, so 1991... That was it. 1992. I honestly don't think anything happened at all. 1992. 1993. I can't remember anything happening during the year of 93. If I remember. But then 93 at the end. I went and visited my friend. The one that had the kids and had a little thing when I was 18. She, we kind of fell for each other, and she liked my hair because I had long hair at this point. So we started dating, and we were together for from that Christmas all the way through till the following September, probably. And I'd visit her at weekends, and I was going to move. I was going to move there and be with her, but she didn't want to. So, yeah, and that kind of fizzled out. I moved to Ireland, and she told me on the phone that our relationship was over because she'd met someone else. The fact is I'd actually moved away to Ireland to get away from her. No, no, actually, no, no, it's not true. I moved, <laughs> I moved to Ireland because I wanted to be somewhere else, because I wanted to go to Ireland, basically. I wanted to get away from where I was. And... That was pretty much the end. Did I? I must have told her I moved because she had my telephone number. And she said, oh, I'm seeing someone else. And I didn't want to say to her that I was as well. Because as far as I was concerned, I'd moved away. That was the end of the relationship. We were still friends because we'd, we'd stayed friends for all those years. And we we did do, we also did for 20 years later as well. But I was like, oh. But then I had a girlfriend in Ireland, and I met her in a library, asked her out, she said, yeah, I think I've made an it, um, oh, this is 90, yeah, oh, no, st other stuff happened before that, so 94, I mean, technically I was still dating her, but there was not really any, hardly any communication at all between us, really. And we, I dated, I met this Spanish girl on Stratford Station and she reminded me of Sabrina, the music singer from 1987, 86, 87. Whew. And I just, I was talking, I was pretending not I was asking her directions even though I knew my way around Stratford quite well at this point I was asking directions like which which can you tell me which train goes to Liverpool Street please and she says ah, la, 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 la. And she didn't say that but she she could speak but it was very broken English because she's Spanish it's not her first language, but she, she, um, I started talking to her a bit and I asked her out and she said yes. 
and she wrote down her address and her telephone number and gave it to me. I was like, wow, okay. It turned out she was an au pair, so I phoned her up, and she could speak really good, actually, very good English. We spoke, that was part of the reason she came over, to be an au pair, au pair, au pair. So she shared, we, uh, yeah, I got a taxi. I spoke to her on the phone a few times. Kind of completely fell for her. Went round. I got a taxi there. It was on a day when there was a, blimey, there was some kind of strike, train strike maybe, or I don't know, some kind of strike where or a bank holiday or something. So it was a long journey. And it was only Harold Wood, so it wasn't a long long play, long way to go, really, from Forest Gate. Anyway, I went to her house. Her The, the people she was working for were on holiday for a week. So I went round there. The first thing she did is say, can you take your top off? I said, no. Like, can you take your T-shirt off? I said, no. Okay, so I'll rephrase that. I stupidly said, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what was going on in my mind. It didn't go well after that. There was, there was just, yeah. She, she kind of lost interest. And I ended up, there was a few moments where it looked quite work promising, but it just, you know, I went out to get some wine, everything was shut in that area, bank holiday Monday, nothing was open. So I thought, okay, she wanted wine, couldn't get it, came back. I said, well, I've got to go now, I've got to catch a train, I leave. The trains are all cancelled. I'm stuck there. I go to get a taxi. The taxi cab's closed. Right, the 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 office is closed. I don't know why everything was closed. I just what I don't understand what was going on that day. And there was no other taxi firms in the area. So I just said to her, "Look, can I stay the night?" And you know, I'll, I'll leave first thing in the morning. And she said, okay. And she she ran upstairs and closed and locked her bedroom door and that was it. I didn't see her anymore until I don't think I saw her. I just left, left when it was time to go. So I don't know, she obviously didn't like me. Didn't take that as a hint though, because I still went and saw her just before she left. And she told me she'd met someone. Like, it was just pointless. She was playing outside, playing ball with the kids or something. So that was, that wasn't so, that wasn't a great one. Um, kind of date, kind of a date. The girl in, oh, the, the lady in Ireland, met her in the, in the library, I think I was asking her where the um, if there was an adult section. She laughed, thinking I was joking. And we just got chatting, and I asked her out, and she said yes. So we went out for a date, went to the pubs, just had some drinks, and I think we might have gone to the cinema to watch a movie. And she's we got on really well, I thought, but she wasn't into me. We went for long walks, and she just wasn't wasn't into me. She wasn't interested in anything physical. And but what she was interested in is getting me to go out on some kind of um, uh, witchcraft occult thing because they used to have they they got a lucky they couldn't have a stone hinged where she lived 
where I was, these big rocks and they do all these ceremonies and stuff. And she was into Wicca or I don't know, something like that. She told me about it and she invited me and I thought, I just thought to myself, well, I'm from England. No one knows me. No one's going to notice me gone. <laughs> I thought, no, I don't want to be some sacrifice on a bit of rock for these people. So I just kind of, I got scared and I hid. And I kind of fell for Andre's cousin, who really liked her a lot, but never asked her out. And then one day I was going to ask her out and I saw her kissing someone. So that was the end of that. And I came home. Back to England. 95. I. I only had one girlfriend in 95 I think. And she was ginger as well. And she was a comedian. This is weird this is. I was in this. I was in the laundrette. And. Just doing my laundry. With the most. Um, probably the, the most important woman in my life. Uh, the laundrette lady, and anyone that's willing to touch my dirty underwear has my respect. So, you know, she knew things. So I basically was in there. I think I was just collecting my laundry. Or it might have been one of them days when the laundrette lady wasn't there. But no, it wasn't. No, I think I went in there, but it, my laundry wasn't finished yet. So the laundrette lady, because I used to go in there and like have a chat with her, speak to her for ages sometimes. We just chat. And the laundrette lady, that is. Because just I got on really well with her. So there's this, this girl or lady there was with ginger hair and... She starts talking and I kind of get myself involved in the conversation. And she mentions something about a gig. Like, oh, I need need my clothes for a gig. I said, what kind of gig is that? She said, oh, it's a comedy gig. I said, it's a stand-up comedy. She said, yeah. I said, I'm a comedian. She said, really? I said, yeah. That was just a really weird coincidence to meet someone like that that was also doing comedy. I mean, she was, a, a, you know, doing it starting and at that point I'd been doing it for, for five years, but I was still quite new, really, to be honest. She was probably better than me. So we went out. I, I basically, I invited her. So she had a gig on the Sunday. I had a gig on on the Saturday and I invited her to come to my gig as a date now I got invited back to this gig because I'd done such a good gig the time before so I was getting paid it was only 10 minutes but I was getting paid and it was so you know, was, but it, I added this extra pressure By taking someone with me on a date. Well, it wasn't really a date, but it kind of ended up being like that. And that was a really bad gig. But she still liked me. So I dated her for a while. We didn't really go out. We spent more time inside together. And But, you know, we got on quite well. And then... I was at 95. But I was having troubles. I was having a few troubles with my... Quite a bit with my stomach and stuff. So this was... This would have been like... Early in the year. And... And then 95... I met someone... Who was... When I, had, I was working... On a on a job I was doing and I met her we started dating and we were with each other for about three months 
and probably someone that I like the most out of everyone, uh, physically at least. I just really liked her, but I was just, yeah. But that didn't last for... She basically, she was married. She wasn't with the marriage. She wasn't with the husband. They'd separated, but I think she ended up... I think she ended up going back to him. I'm not really sure. I don't really know what happened there. But she was... Yeah, I liked her a lot. And then 96... I I had a girlfriend that was working as a security guard and she was a, a trainee nurse, a student nurse. I just only just started working there as a security. And it was a, it was a nurse's home. And, you know, one night I was surrounded, not surrounded because I was outside the, it was like a little hut glass reception bit. That they couldn't get get in, but suddenly there was probably about six or seven young females, all kind of eighteen, nineteen, maybe whatever, and question me, question after question after question. Like who I and apparently they would they liked the previous man and he wasn't there anymore. So I don't know what happened there. Probably the same thing that happened to me. So I asked one of them out. She said no. So I'm like, okay, fair enough. And then they were taking turns to come down. And they'd spend all night with me, talking to me. Like this. You know, I still do my job, but they'd be down there all night long. I had at least three, maybe four of the females would come down and spend a whole night with me. Or, you know, part of the night, maybe up till three or four in the morning, go back and then get up again at nine, go to work or go to whatever. One of them, I got on really well with, but she liked me, and I didn't really. There was there was a there was a time when two were coming and seeing me at different times, and I was just it was good for good to get through the night, you know, because a night shift, so I was getting paid to chat, which wasn't bad. But one of them really liked me. And it turned out the other one really liked me as well. So I ended up kind of dating one of them. But the other one was best friends with her. And it turned out she... I didn't know she liked me. But it turned out she really liked me. And I was like, what were we supposed to do then? And... Uh, yeah, it, it didn't go so well. It was alright. It wasn't, you know... it's I, I managed to pair her off with one of the other security guards because he really liked her and I tried to sort of not pair them off but sort of push like get them to talk to each other and they ended up dating and that so that was all right I think and then when my yeah then another person the original person I asked out started sending, spending time downstairs with me and flirting with me. Um, it was, yeah, very strange. But uh, I ended up getting moved anyway. I got suspended once being accused of drinking alcohol where, out of a flask when actually it was protein drink. So I was going to the gym every day and I was drinking protein drink in the night time. And uh, I don't know, someone, probably someone was jealous or someone had an issue with me. And then eventually I, I got kicked. So I got kicked out and then they put me back because it was a lie. And then 
I ended up getting kicked out again. This time I was out for good and I was moved to a different place. I never really found out what, what happened there, but yeah, blimey. So yeah, my girlfriend used to visit me there as well. <laughs> I hope they didn't have cameras. So then was that ninety six so I was with her from pretty much like maybe June time, 96 till 97, uh, blimey, I can't remember probably the summer 97, so I was probably with her for about a year. And then, yeah, the last time I saw her was, she came and visited me when I'd moved. And this was near the end of the summer, I think, 97. And just to see how it was, because there was some stuff going on. So that was it. Last time I saw her. So I didn't have any girlfriends after that until 98, 98, I can't really remember the girlfriends during that period, 98, oh yeah, I'm, I did have a girlfriend, but none of them lasted very long, so... I had a girlfriend from Norway and then I had I can't remember there was quite a few different people I'd sort of meet up with and I was not very good with the with a date I was good with meeting them but with the dates I just didn't really necessarily know what to say Or to put much effort in, I guess. I don't know, don't know. I've always preferred to just meet someone and get to know them. And then go from there rather than that awkwardness of not knowing who they are. Or And I'm not really, a, I'm not a question asker. I won't sit and ask someone loads of questions because I'd rather just learn about someone organically, you know, over time. Um, trying to think um, I didn't really have I had a girlfriend in I think it was 99 no 2001 2001 so those those are my years when I wasn't really I was dating but I wasn't really dating you know it was just casual relationships I guess and then I did date someone for probably a month or two and we were together and she came around my house and it was this is 2001 I think or maybe 2000 2001 I made the mistake, I got worried that my landlady was home, so I think it might have been like January 2001, and I, I kind of said, just wait in the garden for a minute, and I kind of left her in the alleyway outside, and it wasn't my landlady, it was my landlord who didn't care basically what I was doing, but unfortunately by the time I opened the door and let her in, she hated me, <laughs> so... It, rightly so I don't know why why I did that I don't know even now I was 30 years old I mean come on honestly it was ridiculous but we'd been dating and we'd been going out and she really liked me to start with and then we kind of went out and it was nice but yeah I messed that one up and then 
when was the last after that? Two thousand and one, nothing. Two thousand and two, nothing. Two thousand and three, nothing. Two thousand and four, nothing. I think I might have had a few sort of meetings maybe, but I don't really have any girlfriends. Yeah, it was a bit dry, had a bit of a drought. Um, 2004, I had I met someone in January and that was it. And I didn't really have any girlfriends or anything for the whole of the year. Then in 2005... I had, I think I had three girlfriends in 2005. In 2000, yeah, one, two, no, two. In 2006, I had another girlfriend. That lasted from the summer to the new year. So that, that was more that lasted as more substantial and yeah that was kind of that ended blind my money up to 96 96 2006 in 2007 nothing no, that's that's incorrect. Two thousand and seven, I did have a girlfriend, and I was having trouble where I was living. And I told her, and her her advice was, well, call up the college because I was just started my university degree. Call up your the place you're studying, and they'll probably give you some kind of student accommodation, a list of student accommodation. I did that. She was correct, they did. And the one I found was in a different town, which was a town where I was studying. So I moved and she got upset with me because I moved. Um, and that was the end of that. Yeah, no relationships at all during that period of university. So that was a very, very quiet time. 90, so what's that? 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Nothing really. Um, 2010, after I finished, so I was spending a lot of time with someone, but it was someone that I was at college with. So we used to spend a lot of time together, but nothing happened between us. So we were just friends. And then afterwards we became more than friends. So we were kind of, I don't know, it was just, we were best friends who enjoyed each other's company, I guess. Company. Um, and we, that kind of lasted for a little while. Probably until, I don't know. I had a, yeah, it was kind of on and off and on, really. And I had a girlfriend in 2011. And it was near the end of the year. Maybe October time. And she was from Romania. So it was a long way to travel. <laughs> no, she, she lived local well she lived not that far away and we started dating and we got on quite well and it was nice went out and that I moved in the March or April time to a new place and that uh, I was a bit unwell for a while and I had to didn't really speak to her much for a couple of weeks and then she went away and 
it just sort of fizzled out to nothing. And then, yeah, that was weird. So there was one girl, kind of a one date affair that I had with this lady that I really liked, liked her for ages, went round her house and I've talked about it before because she gave me a bowl of soup and a piece of bread. And I thought, is this a date or a prison sentence? What, What is this? And uh, we went into the shops. We were going to go to the cinema, but it was too late. It was a Sunday afternoon. It was the next film wasn't for like three hours. And then she wanted to go, and I think she needed to get some light bulbs. It just shows you how excited she was with my company. And we went into this electrical store. I said, "Well, I'm just going to go and check out the microphones, just yeah, because that's what I would do." Just try and plan for the future you know one day have a decent setup so this was 2010 beginning of 2010 no beginning of 2011 January well blind it was weird because we were talking to each other for hours and hours every night for about two weeks and then we finally went out, and it wasn't good. Didn't go well. I went to hold her hand in the park, and she pulled her hand away. So I kind of knew then, at that point, that it's time to put my trousers back on. And she, she was in the. I was in an electric shop looking for the microphones, and I left, and my phone rang, and it was her. I was halfway up the hill. I'd left her there. I'd forgotten about her. And she said, where are you? I said, I'm nearly in town. I said, what? She said, I said, oh, oh, I forgot about you. So I came back and got her, came back to see her, and I walked her home. And Things weren't the same after that, for some reason. So, because I was always used to being on my own. I was used to going somewhere and just not being with someone. And I still am. And it's it's just, it's easy to forget that someone's with me. Unless they're there, you know. So, what else? 2011, 2012, 2013. I nearly, I nearly kind of, I got quite close to three females in my insurance job like one I really like and I talk to her outside of work and we seem to get on really well I nearly asked her if she wanted to go for a, a drink I kind of wish I did but I didn't and then unfortunately I got unwell so I, I had to leave well I left and ended up getting sacked for not turning up but there was another lady who I started talking to one Saturday lunchtime because we were in the canteen downstairs and got on really well with her and then she started flirting with me a little bit like for a couple of weeks so I was thinking about asking her out never got around to doing that because I was because then I got ill and I didn't turn up Just before I kind of stopped going to that place, I met another woman. And I swear, it was was like we were on the same level. We were on the same level of, I don't know what it was. And she she said, uh, what time did you finish? And she, I don't know, she spoke like me. I I don't know what it was. There was something... And I think, I think we both enjoyed working out about the same amount. <laughs> but because I left, I never saw her again. It's very strange. It was There was a few potential 
opportunities to maybe engage in some kind of dating pool or I don't know whatever you want whatever you want to call it I don't know but I mean I got on well with a lot of the women there not all of them but a lot of them it's just let's get I've always got on well with women much much more than men generally so that kind of ended nothing happened then so 2013 2014 2015 I moved in here and then I think 2016 2015, 2016 I had to, I met someone and we kind of had a, a one night date as it were and that was nice but it that didn't go anywhere at the end I did have yeah I, I saw someone that came and saw me in 90 no, 2015 um, someone that used, used one of my listeners actually came and visited me and then 2016, 2017, 2000, honestly nothing. That's ridiculous, isn't it? I'm trying to think, surely I must have had a girlfriend. I've had no girlfriend at all for all these years. I just realised. I've got no girlfriend. It's just dawned on me. I haven't got. I just don't even notice it. Don't doesn't only think about it. I haven't had a girlfriend since two thousand and blimey, it's a long time. But without any human contact, it's been two thousand sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this is a ninth year, pretty much. No, eighth year. It's the eighth year where I haven't really had any... It's not completely true because I did... I met, met a couple of people when I was on holiday, but it wasn't dating... But I spent some time with someone for a couple of weeks, but there was no, there was no romance there at all. There was no anything. It was just I had a broken rib, and we just spent time together, and she showed me around. So there's no, there was no attraction at all for from that situation. But the second time I went away, there was someone I liked, but nothing happened. Yeah. So, yeah, blimey, that's seven or eight years without any... I'm thinking surely there must have been someone, but there's not nothing. Wow. Yeah, blimey. How sad. <laughs> so, I think I'm due for a girlfriend... Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, baby, I'll have a girlfriend. You never know. It's possible. Possible, possible, highly improbable. Um... Yeah, maybe. Oh, huh. that's weird. See, yeah, I was. I don't even know. I'm trying to think if there's any. No, I wouldn't even know how to have a girlfriend now. 
I wouldn't know how to be a boyfriend. I don't. I don't know. I know people use the word partner these days, but um, I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how. I, I was no good at it when I was doing it. So I don't know how I'd be now that I haven't done it for years. I'm not even sure if everything still works. It wasn't up to much back then. <laughs> even in my peak, it wasn't doing. It wasn't particularly. Um, wasn't I was never high functioning. <laughs> So, <laughs> I don't know, really. Wow. But I don't even practice anymore. It's just <laughs> blimey. Anyway, yeah. So that that's girlfriends. This is sleepy, boring objects, and this subject was girlfriends. And. Wow, no, I'm just I, I didn't. I don't really think about it. It's not something. It's that I really give a great amount of thought to. I suppose if I talked about my unrequited love, then there have been people that I've really liked over the years that I would say I've even fallen in love with that didn't. Not, nothing happened. There's at least three that I could talk about and nothing came of it but there you go <sighs> yeah blimey Maybe I dream, maybe when I'm asleep I have a girlfriend and that's why I don't think about it when I'm awake. Maybe I'm just happy for the peace. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> maybe she's happy for the peace. That's why she keeps waking me up early. <laughs> that's why I keep waking up screaming. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And 
I'll just listen to it over and over again. Every morning, every evening. There was this recording from we're going back to about 1999. It was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was. person's voice relaxed me. Just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, a tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back, some people maybe listen every day.
and something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now for example I also am affected by the words that I say so if I said to you focus on your feet notice your feet relaxing I will be focusing on my feet I will be noticing my feet relaxing If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand, perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Was snoring or was a pig turned up that's what I sound like when I snore and I get really into the whole experience I 
don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I've noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper, level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. So this allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. Whenever I imagine my breathing improving, when I've got my eyes closed, I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. In 
enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. a joyful heart time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. Peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thought. whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that the mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your body. 
brain. Slowly but surely the muscles in your legs Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply the 
There's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. Very slow. Your stomach. in your stomach your back Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
Joy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. Seeing a sense of complete. 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace. Blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and 
things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest. Giving yourself permission to take some time off. And to allow your body to relax. And allow your mind to slow down. Which in turn releases the tension, any stresses that you had in your body. It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up, allowing the negativity out. And at the same time, replacing that negativity with positive, healing energy. Which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes, maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can 
noticed that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing. Completely moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing. Focus now on your jaw, not just the part of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focus.
focusing on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back, into your hip area. Start to melt. Start to really let go. You don't even know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling
these muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones and moving all the way to underneath your arms relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms healing so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so Focusing now on 
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs your knees so relaxed 
muscles and your shins completely So I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step repres 
sense a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
eight. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. 
the gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and attention falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now but just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. 
and then goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of Acknowledgement, a thank you, gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in? in the garden hugging a tree or something well it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree that's why I'm doing this indoors otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree no I can't see the television from the tree if you move down to your knees Gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a, maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing that's possibly not appreciated until it's temporarily removed you know that comfort but as you focus on your knees regardless of how your knees feel you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, 
the shins and the calf muscles and the bones between your knees and your feet incorporating of course your ankles so important and only when it's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even, it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us, supports our body for a lifetime helps us to balance helps you to get around and be mobile and there's the calf muscles of course When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. I didn't seem to do anything. I was okay. If I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course, that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs, shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone. Leading, of course, to your ankles and your feet. We're not going to focus on your feet, we're just going to focus on the legs. And I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes we've been focusing on your ankles there's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs It's that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees. And of course, there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. The same for my shins, massaging, gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees, your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs yet they're so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only 8 stone still a lot of weight in these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than 8 stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down as in fact my whole legs do my feet feet also go and my toes clap I'm so happy really are amazing and I know that talk about, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly be among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, is still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful six Two. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you 
may notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, there's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing on your hands. Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each number you hear going down from eight 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all of that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. When you 
take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself, appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have 
the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. I'm sure I'm telling you, stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy to let 
let go. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you Continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
to and that negativity would disappear. as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm with all that healing spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep with every number you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Seventeen. 
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind. Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax it's kind of expected we expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed naturally because when you're listening to me your attention is focused on my words and as my words guide you to focus those parts of your body 
the focus increases. Which actually calms your mind. on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with Relaxation increases. to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and it may start listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation that's what you'll get if what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts that's also Because by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission for your body and your mind. In fact, you give the command to your body and drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need and as 
as I focus on the different parts of your body. Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. And get you alert again to my voice focusing on different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. sleep, and that's the last you remember until you wake up, in your own time, when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, because when you do, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, human sleep, oh, it was so nice. Feel that healing energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing you so, so deeply. As you start focus on your eyes, moving down to your jaw, down to your neck.
Let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on your mouth, your lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. in on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now, then they seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if Focusing on your knees, just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your ankles.
go of everything letting go I'm going to start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently. 
just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you. So you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head. I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head. Not pressing, but just holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. 
and when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them. All the time being firm yet gentle with you. And just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if, if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and make you feel really nice. Sometimes it's just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. Now as we move down your arms, we do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. What I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you. And where it still be attached. And I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms. Into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand with 
both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, pressing down and massaging each finger. starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. And actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. And it can feel nice, and you can feel safe. As I put that right arm back down where it was, and then do the same with your left arm, exactly the same, massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroke of the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently, massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back biggest part of your body, starting at the top, starting again where we would have been, that area at the top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards. a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside inwards, so massaging the, your back but the, the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against, almost the part 
It connects your front to your back. You're just massaging down firmly but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle, yet firm as you choose. Eventually you get to the spine. You can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can do that a few times. Sometimes people use the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine, almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine, each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time, rejuvenated. And now I'm going to move to one side, to your right side. And from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis. You're going to massage that area of your back. I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end, that side, all the way to my side. To the middle, in fact, to where your spine is. Massaging that side of your spine the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful, starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. Move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back, kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm in 
and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, or we'll move further up to your top of your body. And I'm going to do the same. This time, starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and massage massaging that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue uh, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from your chest because it's all connected the chest and the back connect together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. as gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands, Fingers digging deep. To 
to your ankles and the back of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but firm enough so they don't tickle and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet the sides your arches, your heel, you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing, yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle, stretching your toes gently and massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides. Massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down. And this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. Perhaps, if you wanted, I could make a future recording where I spend more time on one particular area. As you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles. Gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, the bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. Feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged feels really good. Now, as you turn over. going to start again at your neck area and your 
shoulders. Just to get back in touch with that area. As we move up. fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. Just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. And just moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest. collarbone is, either side of the collarbone, and just massaging the whole of the chest, moving the chest around, Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next, moving my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest, and then moving down again. And then allowing my hands to just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach. Starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart. Just massaging and sliding at the same time. Moving down. To just below your rib cage. Massaging up again, giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely relaxed. Remembering that I'm also going to be focusing on your sides as well area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. So 
just stroking my hands down the sides of your body. Or just below your arms, all the way down to your hips. moving to your stomach area, I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back, I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side, gently massaging one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. I'm going to move round to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, and there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because we do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. As I now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around your belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, and I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet. in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, your heel, your ankle, your toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let Enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings 
become just from touching your skin. You can just lie there as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep comfort and being massaged. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. All the way down to one. And each time I say a number. can imagine that candle in front of you, and I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just, this is not a big Below, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish, and then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one out as well. As we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. And if you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you feel more and more deeply relaxed.
and sounds where you are. You be aware of those sounds. At the moment. And you may. Start to just. Not even notice them. at all, because they're unimportant, where I am, I've got the sounds of the birds, there's Horace the pigeon, that likes to say hello sometimes, is the odd plane that goes by, there'll be traffic and trains in the distance, but none of that seems important whatsoever. you blow out, the less important anything is, the more candles you blow out, the further you seem to say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. First candle, which is one hundred. Blow that candle out. You'll find immediately a slight change in how you feel. As well as a real sense of Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Start 
Ecke.
let go of all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply so it kind of waits for you to lead the way waits for your permission and when you do give your permission and you give the say so and you can say okay it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all like, like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, good, I can now relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past. Where you get home and you just sit down on a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and oh, oh, it feels so nice. Knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least. And if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two. And it feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind, you're prepared to let go of everything. And to just Allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate. And 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax. It may seem almost alien, but it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally, the most natural thing in the world, to allow yourself to feel really calm in your mind, and it is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you'd use to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, and deeper, and you may find that the more relaxed you feel, that your mind starts to wander. Maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while, and your mind goes somewhere else. And then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when we're stressed and tense, we not, may not actually be aware of what we need what we physically or emotionally need in this moment. But when you allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all touch with the feelings of such relaxation, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. Breathing seems easier and more natural and effortless as that cool air enters through your mouth or nose into your lungs. Breathing in comfort 
some relaxation. And just breathing out any excess remaining tension and stress from every part of your body. As you start to focus on your mind, maybe you notice that things uh, have come to a standstill and maybe just much, much slower than before. Because your mind is not really needed when listening to my voice. Which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body. And that synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and uh, the relaxation of your mind lets you know that feeling. positive benefits for your body, your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind. Even your bones are relaxed. Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair that you have feels so. starts to feel the benefit of this healing relaxation. And as you focus from the inside of your scalp where your brain is, you can start to realize and notice the benefit your brain relaxing deeply. And as your brain continues to relax, it sends those messages to the rest of your body. Because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, calm 
concentrated feeling. Calming. Relaxing. Every part of your brain. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body, relaxing each and every muscle of your body. and calm, so very, very peaceful in every part of your body, letting go You feel deeper and deeper relaxed, deeper and deeper relaxed. Calm. 
do a body scan, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. To notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. So I'm going to start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. like you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, open and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movements. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently, but only very gently and very slowly, noticing how your feet feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them, maybe raising your eyebrows, which stretches the tops of your eyes, perhaps squinting your eyes, scrunching up your eyes, just so you can really get in touch all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs. Noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Moving your focus to the back of your leg. You 
just noticing the back of your neck, the muscles, and of course they lead to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, so as you focus on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards, as if you were looking up, maybe moving your head down, as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side, right to left, but only very slowly. to force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so that you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of your arms, the parts where your biceps and your triceps are between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, you may like to just tense them, but very, very gently and slowly. So you're not straining or putting any pressure whatsoever on your arms. It's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling this moment, and just noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles and then let go, notice how the tops of your arms feel. stomach, the area, the lower abdomen area below your belly button, moving all the way down to your hips, just above your groin. Maybe you're able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is a difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your lower abdomen area is feeling on this 
this moment. Just noticing the physical sensations of the lower abdomen. And as you move your attention Seeing your lips from inside your mouth, your teeth, your gums, your tongue. Just noticing. it gently against the side of your mouth and then to the right gently to the side of your mouth perhaps pressing up against the, the top of your mouth and then down gently against the bottom of your mouth to maybe just rotate your wrists by moving your hands in a circular motion very gently and slowly just so that you can sensations that you are currently experiencing in your wrists, perhaps moving your hands up and down, and again
just above your hips, where your coccyx are. So really does include the sides of the body because those muscles are very much connected. As those muscles also move into your hip area, connecting to your buttocks, the sides of your hip. physically able to do so, maybe you can very gently just move your body ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough. physical sensations of your lower back, as we now move to your attention. just, if it's okay to do so, gently open your mouth, not wide, no stretching, just very gently and slowly opening your mouth and closing your Noticing now your chest area, and you don't need to do anything to move your chest because it moves every time you breathe.
some magic breath with each breath you take. And as you focus on how your chest feels. So every time you breathe, you may not notice it, usually, but as you observe your upper back and the middle of your back,
his muscles and those bones in your midsection. Noticing how your hips feel right now. You can very, very gently move your hips. side to side, very gently and slowly. Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching, but it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. Very small movements which make up the larger movements which is always the case. And when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements. Starting to focus on how your body feels, but not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense, or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body be 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings just thinking them thinking about them as just being neutral just feelings not being particularly concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the all the internal parts of your arms, the veins. The bones. Just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm and your right arm? Your right forearm. There may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling. You know, it's there. feelings in your shoulders, perhaps your shoulders when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling, almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing, but of course they're not. Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe find that you move the muscles a little bit. Maybe tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference in each shoulder. back, the left side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of 
notice that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. And sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, but just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. along that fear in your chest just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest. You've got the chest bone. You've got the muscles in your chest. And of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, well, mine aren't that different these days, but there may be more muscles the top of the chest, but at the side, underneath, it's pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. with whatever feeling there is in your chest. Why well, notice that I focus on my chest? I feel it in my my back my upper back. I mean, I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I'm breathing in. And it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. Yeah, it feels feels okay. Doesn't feel a little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. Because I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up. Which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas in your back. Feels quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, You tense a muscle and then you let it go and you let it relax. It relaxes way more than it would normally. And you have to feel that you're able to do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, a, an issue with a per part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when you're relaxing deeply. It's important to be kind to yourself. Notice your mind, how much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording. Peaceful is your mind right now. You have nothing to think about and just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body continues to relax. Because that's what you want to happen. That's what you expect. to fill your body.
body. Maybe calm your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to drift away. Almost as if you are moving further away from your body and your mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a, an escape pod in a spaceship, like a movie space movie, you know, and they get into that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away from the spaceship. Focusing on your breathing, but those individual parts of your body that are relaxing. that you weren't listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe you started to almost 
just move into some kind of a dreamy state. And then you become aware of my voice again. And even though you may want to focus on my voice, you may also wish to allow your mind to just drift naturally into that space of comfort and safety. As you feel body like a warm blanket covering you gently keeping your body at just the perfect temperature don't seem to matter anymore. There's that sense of peace spreads through your mind. Like a gentle breeze strong enough to blow away all negativity, strong enough to remove from your mind any anxiety and stress that was there before. that is filling your body and your mind. on your mind, you may count down from 10 down to 1, and each number you hear, your mind will be calm. Just slightly and from ten down to nine, just a slight movement from nine down to eight, just another small change in how you feel. to 
plus seven. That feeling is like it's a gap, almost like a gap. It starts to get a little wider. The gap between those feelings that you used to have in your mind compared to the feelings you have. security and confidence and the gap becoming wider eight down to seven seven down to six and when you get to five the mind will start to have a certain physical sensation almost like there's a magnet outside of your head sucking the tension and the stress from any remaining feelings that you don't want sucking them out through your skull Just emptiness, but space. A place full of fresh air. A place where you can stretch. It's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sense of peace and tranquility growing as it moves down to two and when you get to one your mind just feels exactly how you want it to feel Almost a perfect feeling. Maybe a, a sensation that you'd like to keep. A place that's safe where stay in that that space of comfort and confidence confident in your own ability to create this space and this feeling of comfort within your own mind just by counting from 10 down to 1 This is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count. feelings in your mind. And when you feel that way in your mind, your body, 
system into every part of your body travels through your bloodstream healing and relaxing every particle of your existence and you can you can practice this a few times before the end of the recording and then you can practice on your own each time you count from 10 down to 1 the feelings of comfort calmness and deep deep relaxation become stronger and deeper filling your mind and brain with these positive chemicals that spread throughout your body relaxing you so quickly relaxing your whole body and mind so very very easily just by counting from ten down to one so we're going to do it now I'm going to count from ten down to one and I'd like you to repeat the number after me so when I say ten just repeat to yourself ten just notice be aware of how you feel in your mind and your body and when I say yourself love again noticing the increase in comfort and calmness in your mind and in your body the same when I say say seven, six, when I say five, four, when I say three, two, and lastly when I say one, when you do this on your own without listening to me you can say the numbers at whatever speed that you feel is necessary for you so you can adapt so if you feel you want to say the numbers 10 down to 1 faster than I do, then go ahead and do that, or if you feel you want to do it yourself, then I'd like to have no more space between the numbers, maybe take a little longer to get from 10 
choices and to do. to one that will be the end of this recording and this of course you're listening with music and the music will continue
Atmungsfunktion. Noticing how you physically feel, having counted down from 20 to 1, allowing stress and tension to leave through your fingertips and your big toes. And as you focus on your fingertips, maybe they feel a little bit tingly, which is understanding considering the tension has been exiting your body and through your fingertips. So now we're going to count from 20 down to 1 again. This time you're going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you may have. Almost as if it's just releasing the whole of your stomach from your navel to just above your chest or below your chest rather. So surrounding your belly button area and the whole area. You can feel the tension as your body, whatever's left, just releasing. And you may notice that your stomach will become more relaxed as you count down from 20 down to 1. Now, 20.
to be able to choose which of these different colors you think is good for your accent. Just notice how you start things. Notice as you focus, just do a little scan of your body. Just notice how your body feels. Focusing on your upper body, your back, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. And you know you may start to feel maybe a sense of tiredness. Maybe it is easier listening to this. you can of course have your eyes in this focus as well so your forehead and your eyes take on their own identity almost as if you were wearing a mask you know like a like a Batman mask or something or kind of <laughs> Zorro or something you know the kind of mask that covers your eyes but also covers quite a lot of the forehead focusing on that area because that's the area that you know is going to release tension or stress from your mind from your brain or from your mind or any tension that you may have had remaining in your face in your neck in your jaw in your eyes in your forehead and in your scalp so basically any tension within your head in your mind everywhere and that's going to be released through your forehead and your eyes as I count down here from 20 down to 1 9 20 19 Fifteen. 
yourself some space to breathe easily, to think calmly, and just to take a break from all the pointless worries, concerns about things that you don't need to think about. in your mind, heart and your body, as you feel so good, so nice that you don't have to do anything to be able to do I'd like you to make up your mind before you go to the next. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide before you go to the next. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that, I guess it is a command really, isn't it, when you're telling yourself a lot. And I'll get into it a bit further on, but only you can really tell yourself in that way. I can't really have someone else saying to you, Mike, relax, relax. you get into it but you can't someone else can't really have the same the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality over how you feel because when you say test it out, you do a little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the thought, the positive thought that you can have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind, and that could be
let's start by let's just focus on left handers. So focusing the hands, we just tell your hands to relax. So just say relax and just focus on your hands. You could say my hands are light or I want my hands to be light. And I think if you actually do it by left hand. Focusing and imagining that your hands kind of feel expanded now because they're all gears that you have here. So talking to your hands and just saying relax. And then to say Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So just saying the same word, relax. Now find the right hand for you. So now I might say relax. So you you might say relax or relax. You know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you. So they might feel right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes rather than looking around your eyes or anything else. So just tell your eyes there. Give that yourself a little bit. Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time or a bit of a break to relax. You know, whilst not talking to you, you may be in contact with that image and you're not happy with it. You're not right with your body. that when I started focusing on my eyes I actually then would feel a lot worse I felt a bit of effort you know I felt that I felt a degree of tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing so I think what that is really is it's me becoming more aware of the tension that is already there that I wasn't I wasn't focused on on the back of the neck 